Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode on Beyond the Barbell with your host, Lauren Hannah Robinson, Nicole Zenobia Graham, and Lou Faustin. Again, guys, you know, we always like to thank you guys first by saying thank you for always tuning in, the continuous support, you know, sharing, liking, the comments, everything. It's truly appreciated. And, you know, without y'all, there is no us. So continue to do that so we could push our division because we're not going to let it go anywhere because we know this is the best division to be in. So on today's episode, we have the famous D Jackson. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Hello, oh, man. How are you? I'm doing, I'm doing good. Still on a little, just a little bit of my high. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. <laughs> Wow. Well, number one, we want to thank you for giving us some of your time. We do understand that you are a very busy woman. So thank you so much for taking the time out to talk to us and allowing the viewers, fans to actually get to know a little bit more about you. Um, for starters, the number one question that we always ask is, why did you choose figure? Um, I, I didn't choose figure. Figure chose me, really. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I uh, been an athlete most of my life. Softball, I ran track. Um, I used to run about five miles a day, do a Tybo tape. Just wow. a fanatic. Oh yeah. But then I go home, eat a pack of hot dogs, eat a two liter drink, a two liter of popper for your soda, wherever you're from. Yeah. And go to bed. Uh. Eat all day, right? Either I didn't eat nothing all day, or I would eat some pretty bad stuff like during the wow. course of the day so but you uh, you've been a, a athlete your whole life pretty much yes uh, how That's long ha how long have you been in the industry you know as far as competing wise and like like when did you start competing what year did you start when did you I, find I started in 2016 no 15 2015 what? wow but, but I just jumped in the show mm -hmm. Because my eating was so bad, I had developed irritable bowel syndrome really, really bad. And my cholesterol was 289. Mm -hmm. I was basically at stroke level, really. And I'm an athlete. Yeah. So I, I jumped in the show because you have to eat clean. And my doctor wanted me to be a vegetarian. I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I want to do that. So, um, you know, I was this close to taking medication and I begged uh, Dr. Prada, I never forget, I begged her not to give me the medication. She mm -hmm. said, she's gonna give me 90 days. And 92 days later, exactly, I competed in my first bodybuilder competition. Wow. And, and won, won, won the overall that day. And I was like, okay, <laughs> maybe. We knew she was bad. What's we that? knew she was bad. I said, we knew she was bad. You beat yeah, like, that oh, and you get the overall title. God dang. I mean, the posing was bad. I mean, the physique was, you know, was okay, but um, I wasn't expecting that. And I, I didn't know anything about bodybuilding. I just did it because I had to eat clean. I didn't want to take meds. So right. when I did it, I was like, okay, I'm pretty good at this. And I, <laughs> and I was uh, 44. Wow. I was 44 years old. Yeah. When I did that, I was 44 years old. And then, um, you know, kept compete, competing. Uh, went to nationals that same what year. Category, what category did you do whenever you started in when, 2015? I, when I started, I wanted to do women's physique. Really. Okay. really. I loved women's physique. And my coaches and everybody kept telling me, your figure, your figure. I said, like, I don't want to do it. I want to do I want to do physique. So mm -hmm. I did figure. Okay. And, and one, you know, and then I kind of like did some more research with, you know, with figure and like, yeah, you know, that's the best fit for me. If it it's my, um, my body type. And then once I did it, I really did fall in love with it. So yeah. yes, I ended up standing in it. So I think I competed five times that year, five or six times. And wow. it, was a, it was a really good year, you know, so I decided to go to nationals, but you know, 
Can you repeat that, that part one more time? The, the very first year that you competed, you did yeah, how many? I, I did five shows. Okay, I, I was just trying to make sure that there's yeah. heard that. Because they think five. a lot of people live in that time of like, I'm going to do one show and then I'm going to go into off season. Yeah. But, you know, I'm so, so happy to hear that you kept going. That that figure really did choose you. And it's yeah. like black women. You know, once you go black, you never go back. It's figures <laughs> the same way. The same way. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I mean, I loved it. I loved the stage. I loved being there. And, um, you know, as I said, okay, you know, maybe I'll pursue going pro, you know. I'm so sorry. I, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I keep looking at Lou's screen. I'm like, girl, she in a tunnel right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she is. <laughs> it's midnight where she at. <laughs> Midnight. But do keep going, keep going. <laughs> That's all right. Oh, man. <laughs> we know you present. We know you present. <laughs> um, that is Larry. Can you hear me? Can you, hear me? Man, you are so right. far. You I am so you far, but this is too good. I don't want to get off. <laughs> Sorry, it's okay. It's okay. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna mute myself again. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Okay, it's okay. You did five shows the first year, and okay. you you found that you did that figure did choose you, and you fell in love with it. So then you're like, okay, I'm good at this. I know I'm the shit. Let me go ahead and get my pro card. So how yeah, that go? I, I I went. You know, the shows I did, with the exception of the first one, you know, they was they were some little hood shows. <laughs> you know, they were. You know, that's like me clients. They like, I want to go to Nashville. I was like, let me see the lineup. Let me see that. Yeah. So the lineup wasn't that impressive. Okay, I just got to tell the truth. So I, went to, <laughs> I went to nationals and um, the first year, and I was in the last call out. I was. Oh, wow. okay. I, you know, I deserved it. I didn't really do my homework. I just went off of these wins that I had. Yeah. But I didn't really look at the requirements, and I didn't mm. take. No, I didn't respect the sport like I should have when mm. I first. Nationals. I took a lot of stuff for granted. So, you know, I looked around backstage and I was like, okay, just have a good time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clearly, you are not ready. So that didn't mm -hmm. go. So well. And it was Masters Nationals on top of that. And it didn't go okay. well. For me. Right. We know you're a fighter because, okay, we're here today. So, how did that, like, so after you got last call outs, what pushed you to keep going? Because it's, I always tell people, you know, your first show is going to tell you if you're a competitor or not. You're either going to be like, oh, hell no, this is not for me. Or I know I'm better than that and I'm going to keep going. So clearly you're a, I'm better than that, I'm keep going. I knew I was better than that. I lost mm -hmm. because I didn't do my part. Right. I, I knew why I lost. I knew I didn't do my part. I knew I took some things for granted. Mm -hmm. So I went back in. Um, I actually got a new coach. And mm -hmm. uh, Robinson, mus Muscle Dog Fitness. To this day, I've had the most wins with him. And uh, went back to work. Went to the Kentucky Muscle. Um, won the overall there ag again. And wow. then, um, you know, we just kept at it. Went back to Nationals. I placed fifth. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. Huge you know, improvement. Yeah, we've, been, we've improved. You know, went back again in the first call out, but just I needed I, I needed to stay off the stage mm -hmm. the I need to stay off the stage so um I stayed off the stage for it was from March then I went back to North Americans in September and finally got my pro card the Arnold when I did Arnold uh, Masters Nationals no Masters and I think Arnold that was my warm-up show to okay. go to for the nationals and mm -hmm. I ended up that day at the Arnold amateur I won the masters overall that day and I was the first American African American oldest to ever win it that day wow so I won. yeah they, I didn't get they didn't give me the open I'm not gonna go there they didn't give me the open uh but I, I didn't let that stop me so mm -hmm. after Arnold in March I went to North Americans and I earned my pro card in 2017 wow nice. So oh, you wow. start the year I got my pro card. Yeah. You started in 2015 and you got your pro card 2017. Yes. Wow. Yes. 
Wow. Yeah, it took me two years. Okay. Hey, nothing wrong with that. There's nothing no. wrong with that. I always like to hear about people where it wasn't necessarily an overnight process and it really took them, you know, a while to really build the physique that they needed to build. Those stories are always more of the stories that I really want to hear. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to excuse me, cut my fan off. It's making a weird noise. I don't want it to explode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I got to see that Dell. Hell. Oh, I know. Here you come. See them tricep? Go ahead, push yourself out <laughs> again with them winning arms. Hell. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So that's so, awesome. You became a pro. And let's talk about now your pro career. Because, you yeah. know, everybody always says, like, once you become a pro, you honestly got to get used to not winning. We already know you won three this, you know, recently. But I want to talk about how you stayed so loyal, so committed to your goal, to your dream, to winning. Not just a master show, an open show and getting you to the Olympia on an open show. How did that journey happen for you how did it look like how did it start like yes I'm a pro that's awesome being a pro but it's hard it's probably it's the hardest thing to be is a pro you know especially a top level pro and you prove that you are masters are open you're but you're you're the shit so how did how did you you know what steps did you take what did it look like from 2017 until now uh the first pro show I did was the Pittsburgh pro okay close to home and I wanted my dad to see me compete and I knew it was um, one of the bigger shows. I always wanted to be in the big shows because I wanted to stand with the best to see what I needed to do to get there. Mm -hmm. So I, that show was like uh, 40, maybe close to 40. And I placed 12. Right. And I was happy with that. Because <laughs> I was just off the gate and um, I got a chance to stand with some competitors that I really admire. I really did. And my perspective was always, okay, D, you know, you're one of the older clients. I mean, uh, competitors um, just always step on stage and be the best version of yourself and show people that you can hang. That's always my attitude. If you win, that's a bonus, but get up there and show people that you can hang with them. That was my, always my perspective. Right. My, mm -hmm. my issue though, was that I wouldn't stay off the stage. Mm -hmm. Four shows that year. Orlando, I forgot what the other show I did. Um, Kentucky Muscle, again, I, I did open. And I wasn't staying off the stage long enough to let my body so I could grow. Right. So the one year I did that, I did Orlando. I think Nicole was at Orlando. I stayed off the stage and I came in fifth. Mm -hmm. And you look yeah, really I good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you that the best pro show I ever did was, I know Nicole, remember this show? It was Savannah. And Savannah, I think, I think it was, fifth, was it 52? Something like that? It was a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of people. It was like close to 50 of us that showed up for that show. And it was 11 in the call out, including a young lady oh. who had died. I forgot her name. She's so sweet. Uh, she recently passed away. She was actually in that call out with us. Yeah. And I remember, mm -hmm. I, I remember standing on that stage. It was the happiest day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my God. It's like, yeah, I made it. <laughs> I think it's the best day ever. I want to say for all you so good. <laughs> yeah. well, I was happy. <laughs> You're like, they better be taking pictures right now. <laughs> yes, sir. And I saw the call. I was like, D, you done made it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. I would have, yeah, I would trust me, I'll be doing the same. Yes, I got off the stage. I think I was um, I think I was ninth. I think I was ninth in that show. And it took me a while to call my coach uh, at the time. I called I, I finally called him. He was like, I hear from you all day, D. I thought you was mad. You know, mm. I was like, mad? That's just the best day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best day of my life. And, um, you know, I tell any pro, especially a new pro, is that when they put you on stage and they stand you with some of the best competitors in the world, don't take that for granted. Do not. 
because they stood, they had, they actually did a comparison and put you next to the best. And that says a lot about who you are as a competitor. You know, winning that day for me would have been a bonus, but I was in heaven. That's still one of the best yeah. the shows ever. <laughs> Crazy. So it, if you weren't in the fitness industry, working in the fitness industry, do you think yes. you would still be able to have this outcome, you know, with all of your successes? Because we have people that are in the industry that are also successful and top level competitors that, you know, do do reach these goals. But there are some people that don't work in the fitness industry, but they think that they cannot reach these levels because they don't work in the fitness industry. So I want it. We want them to hear your, you know, perspective. <laughs> And if you think that you would still be successful as a competitor, have had you not been working in the fitness industry? I think it's based on the individual. I, mm -hmm. mean, I don't think me personally that I would have reached the success that I have if I was not in the fitness industry. I mean, having mm -hmm. a, like I work, I have a, a studio. I got I have access to equipment all day, every day. Mm -hmm. um, with other people all the time i'm training people all day i'm online so i have a, a real good understanding of muscle development muscle maturity i also do some re some rehab you know mm -hmm. i have a, a, a certification in nutrition so all those things in the fitness industry absolutely have helped me personally with my mm -hmm. training and conditioning definitely right I mean, I, I agree. Uh, I, I feel the same way. I don't think this would be as, I don't want to say necessarily easy, but it's definitely beneficial being engulfed in the industry and being around fitness on a daily basis rather than, you know, the normal nine to five corporate, which there are, you know, athletes out there who are top athletes um, who have, you know, corporate jobs, but I will say it's definitely beneficial to just be in it every single day absolutely and i have all of the all of it I, I have multiple jobs that people don't even know about you know and i'm in the fitness industry and i have two children that are now one type one diabetic and autistic so it's very 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 doable and my children are one's going to be 10 and one will be five at the end of this year so it's not like i just woke up with these you know the problems that i have they're not even really problems to me that they make me better, honestly. I see them as like a, a hashtag mark or a star that I could put underneath Lar Hannah. Like this goes with her resume because she's qualified to do whatever the F she wants, literally. Yeah. But that's so that's awesome. right. like for I'm glad to hear that though, because you one, you're real with yourself and you know yourself because it's hard to face the reality of I know myself as a person. I know I'm not gonna be able to be 100 percent if I'm not in the fitness industry. You know, it's I'm glad you're able to say that and be able to put that out there for everybody to understand and know because you're that dedicated to your goals and clearly it's working out. So let's talk about your actual wins. Yes. So before we even go into that, so I, I just need people to understand exactly who this woman is. Number one, she is a true testament to age is nothing but enough because there is no way that you can look at this woman and number one guess exactly how old she is. Like she's just youthful, energy is just youthful. So that's number one. Number two, not only has she won a series of masters shows, um, she's also going to the masters Olympia. Number three, she is now, she can now say that she's actually won an open fan show. So she's not only going to the Masters Olympia, she's right. also going to the Olympia this November. So the, tell us how, you know, tell us what this open win meant for you. I know the Masters Olympia is, you know, still also a big thing for you, but what does it feel like knowing that you're going to both? Uh, it's very surreal, really. Um, I, I gotta be honest. When I went to Tri-City, I had, I'm not taking anything away from the Masters Olympia, but the bottom line is the, Olymp the Olympia is the pinnacle of our sports. It is the Super Bowl. So I felt like this was my alternative because I was not going to the Olympia. So I um, settled. 
I said, okay, this is my this is my way to get there. So when I showed up at Tri City, number one, we had not pulled all my water. I was in the bed for four days because I was sick. Poor. Yeah, I remember you telling me that. Yeah. To walk from one room to other, Calvin, bless his heart, I love him, Calvin Williams. We were good friends even before he coached me to show. He was making my food, knocking on my door, get me out the bed, posing me, and I would go back to bed. We did that for three days. I couldn't move. So I got up that day and I was like, well, just get dressed, just get, you know, do what you need to do. So I you know, got dressed. He's like, you look good. I'm like, great. So I'm thinking, win 50. That's another resume, another little point for Masters um, Olympia. Win 50 do well in the 40, win 40, and be happy. That was my attitude. So I get backstage, and I had four ashwagandhas, four, and a little piece of a cannabis gummy, just a little piece. <laughs> because the I didn't feel, all right. I was free. <laughs> and I didn't feel, you have no I was free, I was, I was real free. And I was, you know, hey, it was a, it was a relaxed atmosphere. You know, kudos to uh, Ronald uh, Huff. He did an excellent job. It was so laid back. So, you know, I get on stage. I'm telling y'all the truth. If you go back and you watch the video, you will see me almost stumble to the side. Oh, I come myself because I'm a little bit, a little bit more than high. Okay, so I still might get there. <laughs> I had to, I had to almost like stop myself from laughing. Really, I'm telling y'all the truth. I'm telling y'all the truth. <laughs> Even when I get to the back pole, you see, I can hardly stand up, and I put my hands on my legs. And I said, "Straighten up," and I get into the pose. <laughs> wow. So I get in the pose, and I get off stage. But that's the most relaxed I've ever been on stage. Yeah. I didn't overthink it. I just said, "Oh, you know." Whatever, just go out there. You you know you sick. You feel you high. Just go out there and do your job. I do my job. We come back in. We do forty. I woke up. They put me in the middle, and I didn't move. And I said, "Okay, straighten up." Mm-hmm. Right. So we get to open the call outs. I was done. I'm telling y'all about the goodness of God. I'm telling y'all, I was done. Do you hear me? I had already gone on stage and posed twice. Because, you know, it was a smaller show. They had us go out and do it. At this point, my quads are toast. One locked up on me. And wow. thank you, Trey. Trey, thank you, Trey. Because Trey saw, my, saw me in distress. He saw it. He saw it. I could not reset. And he said, quarter turn to the right. I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> because D. Let's get ready to fall out on that stage. Yeah. But that work, but I remember Nicole, we used to pose, used to make me sit in them poses for a really, really long time. And I'm telling you guys, you guys watching, you need to sit in the pose because you don't know how long you're going to be in that pose. Again, I had already posed twice. So my leg mm. is locking up on me and Trey turns us and I'm able to hold on to it. You know, so I'm like, okay, it still has not hit me yet because I'm, I'm at this telling myself, you know, we, I, it, just in case I lose, I already told myself that I wasn't going to win. That way I won't be so disappointed. You know, mm-hmm. that's how we do. So I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, and I'm honest. I'm like, okay, well, this, you know, she probably going to beat me today. I'm going to blow it off. Go ahead and do it. So I win 50. All right, whatever. We good. We get on stage. I'm in the middle. And they call her for second. I remember I looked out the audience and I looked at Calvin. I was like, what just happened? <laughs> what happened? I'm in, mm. I'm in shock. Cause, because it was me and her in the open.
Right, right. <laughs> so you already knew. You already, already knew. knew what's next. Yes. I already knew. So when I got to open, you know, you, you can't relax until you hear your name. You got to hear your name. You got to hear your name. Mm-hmm. When mm-hmm. I heard my name called, my whole body, I'm telling y'all the truth. Uh, my, I just, uh, <laughs> my whole body just like froze. Like, I cannot believe this. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm 52. I'm not even supposed to be here. I'm high. I'm sick. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I'm taking this whole show for granted. Like, whatever. Do your job and get off the stage. Yeah. And you, you win. What happened? So you guys see me hug her at the end. And I hug her and I looked at her and I said, what just happened here? I'm 52. Mm-hmm. What happened? Wow. And by the way, let me let me tell you guys, she was 49. Yeah. Um, 49. Yep. And 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 most of the girls, I want to say five, no, sorry, four of the girls who were in the open were from 40. Uh Linda had been off the stage for four years. And she played third. Four years. Wow. But she was a queen when she was on stage before. Four years. So it was just an incredible outcome of how that happened you know so i go home and i reflect on this this is not bad today it's easter and i reflected on this and i was like you know god what happened here you know because i I really we never feel like we deserve it i was like i don't deserve this not that so i go to listen to this so i go to the tri-city classic the number three means completion and the number it means perfection right so I show up at the Tri City and I win all three divisions, which I didn't expect that either. So, I, and and I didn't pick that show. That show picked me. I picked it. Be, you know, it was like, okay, oh here, this come up, it come up. Okay, somebody sent it to me. This be a good warm up for the Charlotte Cup, you know. And it, it seems like as soon as I let go and said, let whatever will be will be, that's when God showed up. Yeah, one, two, three. I'm gonna just say she gonna need to keep those cannabis gummies on deck. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to reach. Can y'all, can, can y'all hear me? I just popped in. Can I have the brand? Know that I'm, yeah. I am ready. I, I, I traveled with these. So this is this is what I need. This is what I need, D. I just need these. <laughs> the brand, the make, the model, the year, all of that. <laughs> I need to get one. To the God, nothing else. <laughs> Lord. But what, what I do want to say is, Dee, do you remember, and I'm, I think it was last, last season, you had asked me, you know, I think, I think I'm going to just, I think I'm going to just, you know, stick with Masters. And I was like, no, nah, I think you're still pretty competitive in the opening. You did. like no I don't think you should do that you know if you want to but you did tell me that you were like no and I remember I asked um I can't remember which one of the judges it was uh I can't remember which one it was last year I asked specifically should I go to masters um Tyler sorry I, it was Tyler after Tampa and mm-hmm. I said should I, should I just go to masters and he said no you should not compete in masters you should compete in the open you know but i wanted to stay in masters because it was safe it was safe well, you know be sleeping on masters i mean i'm saying like <laughs> i see that muscle maturity i mean like i yeah. can really take that for granted they really do because y'all come in dry hard you know yeah the mature muscle yeah. and I, i'm praying that um that this win will not only encourage you know, other masters competitors to don't be afraid to get into the open, but mm-hmm. even not all, not all, you know, even with the judging that just because this person was in masters, don't see him as a master's competitor. Right. We're, all, we're all just competitors. You know, we get on stage, age is just the number. That's all it is. You know, it don't, because this person just won masters, they can still win open. Literally, and you yeah. proved it every single time. You ha- you can hang with any and everybody at any show that you show up to. At this show, just proved to you that you you are who you showed everybody else that you are. You just didn't know that you 
this show, one, two, three, you literally have the Trinity. God, yeah. the Father, yeah. the Holy Spirit. You finally yeah. let go of the Spirit <laughs> with yeah. that gummy. So Jesus, pull through for you. See that cannabis. Put that on earth for us, Lord. And I want to say thank you, Father God, because you pulled through for thee, Jesus. We needed it. I need some more. <laughs> Just in case you might go to church today. There you go. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's your word for the day. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> no don't don't lie me. But, no, but for real, I'm super proud of you. That is so awesome. Like, your story is amazing. Like, I'm literally getting chills just hearing all of this. And just every just knowing that everything that you went through in the past led up to this moment right now, literally. It really did. It really did. It led up to this moment. Every time you get off stage, anybody listening, you know, take take the lesson away from it you know and grow um one of the things you don't want to do you get off stage and, I, and we're all guilty of it and i stopped doing it because i get off the stage you're like i should have i should have i should have should have should have should have mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but i remember the call you said one time you said well everybody look good when they're standing by themselves mm -hmm. of course look of course you look good in the morning when you dry mm -hmm. <laughs> right. rested <laughs> right rested right. So let's let's go back and let's look at the pictures. Let's look and see what you really did. What could you mm -hmm. really do? You know, don't get right. mad. Don't start all that talking. Uh-uh. Go back to the lab. Take the judge's feedback seriously and make the changes. I've stood in front of Bill and said, I've, I've competed in my lifetime uh, 33 times. I want to say I've been in front of Bill six or seven times. And I was so thrilled when I found out that he was the judge because you always want to look better when you stand right. in front of that judge. So they want to see improvement. And I tell my girls, you know, they reward you for, you may not win, but they want to see that you are still growing, that mm -hmm. you're still making changes, that you still love the sport, you know? Mm -hmm. So making those changes, making them seriously. So, you know, the judges kept telling me the same thing. At first, I went listening. You condition, but you need to grow. You condition, but you need to grow. So we, I didn't. I didn't concentrate on the number on the scale for this prep. I didn't. I just kept looking at pictures. Um, Calvin kept me full by keeping a lot, keeping a lot of water in. I drank a lot of water. I mean, I don't think I drank less than a gallon and a half this whole prep. He kept me full. And this is the first time I ever worked my chest like I did. He gave me two chest days. When I listen, when I when I first got the the workout plan to call, I, I texted him. I was like, wait a minute, you sent me the wrong plan. This is a dude workout. <laughs> <laughs> I said, just like, I was like, no, this is a dude workout. He was like, no, that's your workout. I was like, I don't know what that. <laughs> <laughs> but I did it anyway you know I'm a coach I want to be compliant and I work my chest twice a week and I made sure I was with my trainer when I did it to make sure I did it and I needed it because it gave me that size up here in my shoulders and in my chest to create a little bit more width and that's the first time I've ever been in a show where I was one of the biggest girls I was always conditioned but always one of the smallest girls because I would look at the scale and say oh my god I want 38 go run yeah. five miles. Oh my God, the scale didn't move. Even though I'm tighter today, but the number didn't move. So I got to make the number move. So now mm -hmm. I'm conditioned, but I'm too stringy. I'm, con I'm conditioned or I'm too hard. Mm -hmm. So I had to say, you know, put the blinders on, get off the scale. What is your physique doing? Right. That's awesome. And you're, you already answered it, right? Because we always like to ask at the end, like, what is some words of encouragement that you want to leave everybody else? But you just told us, like, yeah. accept the reality of what actually happens on stage. Don't go off in chitter chat, none of that. Look at what you actually did, what you actually competed your entire prep, those 12 weeks, 16 weeks, 24 weeks. Did you change? Go look at those pictures. Forget your emotions. Go look at the facts. And that is so true. And look, and clearly it's working because one two three the trinity you got all three wins 40 50 and open you're going to romania and you're going to orlando so congratulations thank you i'm sure i'll see all you guys in orlando <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we just got a qualified game and that's all good <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Right. I'll see. Thanks again. Thanks again for having me. Thank you. Can you, can you guys hear me finally? I'm sorry. Yeah, it took me a few tunnels and some loud New York traffic, but I'm here and I listen to everything. I just couldn't want, I'd out of respect for the three championship, the three titles that you had in one show. I had to just sit here and at least listen. Um, and listen to the knowledge and your story um, because it's something that needs to be shared and it's something that we should all hear uh, no matter how seasoned we are or not. And um, one key thing is make sure you got your gummies. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also a nothing but number, clearly 52. Yes. Uh, a Super Bowl of Super Bowls. Yep. Bodybuilding, bro. Like that's the hardest sport to compete in in general, it's the only mental yeah. sport that is yes. created ever. And you're yes. going at 52. That's crazy. Congratulations. Thank I you. Think I think you guys are getting ready to get trend, too. I think you're going to see a lot of competitors that are in their 40s. Now they're going to start jumping in at Masters. You know, oh, yeah, I think we're going to start seeing that. So they can at least try to get to, you know, get Romania. I think I think Romania. I'm gonna stop saying Romania. I think the Masters Nash uh, or Masters Olympia is on blow up, especially next year. And you know, kudos to the IFBB at IFBB for bringing it back after 11 years, yeah. so that there's even another opportunity. You know, for people who are older, you know, to to keep to keep pursuing the sport and not feel like there's nothing left for me. Mm -hmm. Well, 2023 was your year. So you said yeah. you worked in threes, right? Because it was also 2023. So that's that's amazing. Yeah, well, I start prepping tomorrow. So I, my last day of debauchery is today. <laughs> well, I enjoy it. Yes. <laughs> Easter, everybody. And yes. thank you so, so much for tuning in. We cannot say thank y'all enough. And we will see y'all on the next episode. Peace. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. Don't oh, forget. Yeah. We'll not only see you on the next episode, but do not forget that uh, Iron Alliance Gym and Beyond the Barbell presents Pose Down. This will be in Burnsville, uh, Minneapolis. So make sure that you tune in for that. Uh, register. The link is in our bio. We are covering all divisions.